<clears throat> hey everyone. Um, so this time I'm going to start my talk for real. No, no kidding around. We're going to hear about a correct by construction blockchain consensus protocol. And you know, I hope you're all excited to be here. And I hope you're all aware that I'm starting to speak and so are coming into the room. Um, but I don't have time to wait. So here we go. So firstly, let's do a basic introduction. Like consensus protocols are kind of fundamentally about deciding, like nodes on a distributed network, making the same decisions, even though they might have different views of the network, right? And uh, those decisions, you can think of them as being on values, but normally, you know, we think about, in our context, replicating a virtual machine or some kind of state machine. Um, so traditional consensus protocols decide on one block of transactions at a time, um, whereas, um, it's, it's, and they do it with irreversible finality with every single block, right? You come to a Byzantine quorum, you sign the block, and, you, and every block is created, and there's never any forks. Um, and um, this usually requires, on the order of the number of validators, messages for every block to accomplish this, right? Because you have to come to consensus before you make every block, essentially. Um, in proof of work consensus, on the other hand, uh, we don't come to consensus on every block before we make it. Instead, we have this kind of forking phenomena where we just try to put the block on there, but if we fail, it might leave, but somehow, if we wait long enough, we feel like, oh, it's never gonna leave the blockchain. Um, and these protocols have a much lower overhead. So basically, the thing that I'm gonna show you today is this consensus protocol, Casper the Friendly Ghost, which finalizes every block with asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerant consensus safety, the way that traditional consensus protocols do, but is able to do this with the overhead of proof of work blockchains. So, um, you know, it, it kind of represents some of the best of both worlds, right? Both finalized decisions and also hyper low network overhead. And the reason why this is cool is because it kind of provides us a unified way for thinking about both of these things. So, I'm gonna give a little overview of my talk and then I'm gonna go right into it. So, the consensus safety proof is this thing that all of the consensus protocols that are correct by construction process satisfy. Um, and then I'm going to specify some of these things. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about uh, maybe live this a little bit and then give some experimental observations where we're going to see this kind of network efficiency that I'm talking about. Um, so let's get started. So, so the consensus safety proof is the, probably the most important thing that you understand in order to gro grok this whole process. So, we need a few things for this thing to be fine. We have protocol states and state transitions. Uh, and we have an estimator and this thing called estimate safety. I'm going to define them in a second. And then we have this, this theorem, this result, that if nodes have a common future state in the protocol, then they have, then they have consensus safety on decisions that, are, that have estimate safety. So if I decide on something with estimate safety, then I'm going to get consensus safety for free if we have a common future. And so basically, um, Protocol states are just like things in a group and per state transitions are kind of paths between them, right? An estimator takes these protocol states and maps them to, in the binary consensus, like a zero or one, and the blockchain consensus, like a whole blockchain. So it's kind of our fork choice rule mechanic, right? It'll guess. An estimator is not a decision, it just guesses. Um, oh, looks like we have laggy. So an estimate is safe, basically, if the estimator, for all future possible protocol states that can be accessed from that, from that state, um, the, the estimator re returns, this, returns a value like one or has a blockchain that also is, um, that, 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 that will always have that block in the chain. So a block is safe if all future blockchain fork choice rules, fork choices have that block in the chain, and a bit is safe if all future estimators have that bit. So if two estimates are safe at two states, and those states have a state in common, then because those things are, the estimates hold for all future states, and they have one in common, they mo they'll both hold from the, in that one state that they have in common, and that means that they have to be consistent, because you can't have you know, the block be in the fork and not at the same, at the same thing. So in, and that's, that was kind of the first part of the proof. Basically it says, if nodes have a common future, then they have consensus safety. The next part, basically, is a construction to make sure that they will have a common future unless there's more than some number of Byzantine faults. And the way this works is basically we have protocol states, which are messages, 
uh, we have state transitions, which corresponds to receiving messages or increasing your, the, like, you know, going to supersets of protocol messages. Um, and if we count Byzantine faults and exclude the sets of messages that have too many faults, then we can um, guarantee that they have a common future unless there's that number of faults. Basically because first we allow all of them to have a common future no matter what. Then we remove the states that have too many Byzantine faults. And so two states will have a common future unless there's too many Byzantine faults. And that gives us kind of our key result here, which is that as long as there's not too many Byzantine faults, so they have a common future. And if they have a common future, then they have consensus safety. And so this, this, this consensus safety proof basically says, look, as long as there's not too many Byzantine faults, then we have consensus safety. And the cool thing about this is I had to, I had to say almost nothing about the consensus protocol, right? All I had to do was say it has protocol states and, um, and, and I mean, I said nothing about the nature of the estimator, right? And so now we're gonna kind of see this, we're gonna see this thing happen. So I'm gonna define uh, protocol messages and then the estimator, Byzantine fault detection, states and state transitions, and then the end estimate safety for the binary consensus. And then we're gonna do a tiny change and generate the blockchain consensus and a tiny change and do validate rotation and a tiny change and remove fault tolerance thresholds from the protocol. Um, and that'll kind of demonstrate the, the, the power of the approach here. So for the binary consensus, we have protocol messages that are bits. They, they, sorry, they have three parts. A bit for the, for the estimate, a sender, which is like the node who sent it, and a justification, which is a set of messages. Um, the the a, 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 a protocol message is a dependency of the other. If it's like in the justification or in those justifications, basically if there's pre-block pointers or pre-hash pointers to it, then it's a dependency. Uh, latest message is one which is kind of, there's no, there's, there's nothing earlier, right? So a dependency is earlier. If, if you're not a dependency, then you're later. And a latest message um, is, is kind of extreme on there. So the way that the binary consensus works is you look at all the validators' latest messages. If more of them by weight have zero, then you pick zero. And if more of them by weight have one, then you pick zero, then you pick one. So basically, if this, so the score of an estimate is the sum of the validators who have latest messages who have that estimate. And if the score on zero is more than zero on one, the estimator returns zero, otherwise it returns one, and otherwise, and, and if it's a tie, then it returns this kind of exception. Um, so, um, so, so that's kind of our definition of estimator, uh, and, and that's, that, that's kind of gonna be necessary for us to have the concept of deciding on safe estimates. So Byzantine faults are kind of this interesting and tricky thing. Um, basically, each of these nodes have, are making messages where they, where they attest to what they've seen from other nodes, right? And if it's ever the case that I have a set of messages where different nodes attest to having seen some node make messages that could never have possibly been made by a single node, um, then we have a Byzantine fault. Because basically, a single node, so the way they're characterized is that they follow protocol executions according to um, the, like the protocol executions uh, in, in the state. So, so here, uh, equivocation is this, is, is this property that two nodes, that, 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 is, that a node isn't actually a single threaded. And it means that they made two messages, neither of which are in the dependency of the other. So rather than including their messages in each other and having a single thread, they have a multi, it's, multi, it's multi threaded. And we, can, we basically are gonna be able to identify Byzantine nodes by their equivocations, and we can like, you know, like count them all up. We can measure their weight, and then we can define protocol states as all of the sets of messages that evidence less than some number of faults. Then we define protocol executions just as supersets in those things. And then we're basically done. Um, the binary uh, est estimate safety basically means that the, so it's estimate is safe, it gives them fault tolerance in some state. If for all future states, that estimate is also the estimator in the future states. So there's like a disinvariance, right? All future states will return zero, or all future states will, will return one. And because of the way we constructed this, this satisfies our safety proof. They all have future states unless there's T faults. If they have future states, they have consensus safety. And so we have a binary consensus protocol with safety. And you know, this is kind of where we can relax because this was that was all the hard that was most of the hard work. Um, now we're going to find the blockchain consensus protocol, and it's really going to be a lot easier because we've already done most of the work. So the blocks kind of look very similar to the messages for the binary consensus, only instead of having a bit, there's, a, there's another block in the first, in the, in the estimate spot. So every block kind of has a pre, every block kind of has a pre-block, a sender, and a justification. 
Um, and there's this thing called the Genesis block. And, like the, and, and, and this is kind of the heights, the, the heights of the blocks. So, you know, this is me defining like all of the blocks being all the blocks at all the heights. Um, so there's a couple more definitions that we need. Basically, instead of having an, the estimate just be the same, we're gonna have the estimate be a member of the blockchain. And that's what this represents. So like B block one is in the blockchain of block two. And then the score of a block is the weight of validators whose latest messages are, have the block in their blockchains. So if, 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 five blo if, if like five weight of the validators have block A in their latest blockchains and three of the weight have block B in the latest blockchains, then block A will have a higher score. So then we can have this uh, fork choice rule. It's called the greedy heaviest observed subtree. You start at the Genesis block, you look at the children of the Genesis block, which are the blocks that have a pre-block pointer to the Genesis block, and you ask what are their scores, and their scores are given by whether or not, or how much of the weight of the validator's latest messages are on those blockchains. And then you pick the best child, and then you kind of repeat the process, where, again, you calculate the scores for each of the blocks by looking at the latest messages and seeing if, wh whose validator's latest messages are on those blocks. And then you pick the block with the highest score until at some point you get to a block with no children. And that kind of represents the whole fork choice. Um, the cool thing here is that protocol states and state transitions are defined exactly as before. There is literally no change, right? We just like, the tech Byzantine faults is exactly the same way. Exclu uh, define protocol states as sets of messages with less than some faults and state transitions as supersets. And then we can define estimate safety for the block blockchain. And basically it's very similar. It means that for all future protocol states, this block is in the blockchain that we're gonna choose at those future states. So a block is safe if in all future fork choice rules that you make, that block will be in there. So that, and that, and that was actually it, right? Because all the other stuff, and, that, and that, the specification is really kind of like done there because, um, and we got to benefit from all of the work we did earlier from the safety proof and the binary consensus. We got to like pretty much reuse most of those, most of those, most of that work and only had to redefine you only had to define the message type, the score of blocks, the fork choice rule, and safety. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we were able to go from the binary consensus to the blockchain consensus with a minimum change. Um, safety oracles, this is kind of important. It's kind of important that we are able to detect safety. I'm not sure what happened to this slide. Um, so an, um, an est no, like what I've shown so far is that if you were to make estimate decisions on safe estimates, then it would be consensus safe. But you might, you need a way. We might actually need a way to figure out if that's the case. So we have a couple of definitions here, um, and this I'm going give, to give give like a simple way to do this. So a validator sees another validator agreeing on an estimate if the latest in the latest message of validator I, in their justification, the latest message they see from validator J has an estimate that agrees with the estimate that we're trying to say is safe. Uh, an agreement in the binary consensus means that they are the same bit. In the blockchain consensus means that they are in the, blo in the blockchain of the other block. Um, so, so VI sees VJ means that the validator I sees the latest message from validator J that agrees. Um, and there's another definition here that's that cropped out, and it basically says the VI can't see VJ disagree, um, which means that they, there's no new latest message from VJ that they could see that doesn't agree with the estimate. And so basically, if there's a set of validators who can't, who see each other agree and can't see each other disagree, it turns out that um, if they have some number of weight, some amount of weight, um, and that weight is more than uh, more than half the weight, then you, then you can actually show that there is some amount of fault tolerance, but our safety definition requires that we have T fault, to we can tolerate up to T faults, however, um, um, there might already be some initial faults in our view, so we kind of subtract that. So basically, as long as the, um, the, the this, this is kind of the overlap between two sets of validators that, uh, which, which, like the overlap in weight of the validators and the clique, uh, if that's more than the fault tolerance, then, we're, then we have safety. It's very similar to a traditional kind of consensus safety proof, only it's working on these estimates instead. And the intuition is quite clear. Basically, 
if in, in the clique, they can't, can't convince each other that they've seen something else. And if they have more than half the weight, then whoever can convince them from outside the clique won't have enough weight to actually contribute. Great. So that actually was a hard part also, but we're, 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 get, we're getting through it. We're almost done. So um, subjective fault tolerance thresholds is a pretty cool thing. Basically, if you have two protocols which have the same, which are the same except for the fact that they operate at two different fault tolerance thresholds, and one of them is smaller than the other, then consensus, the, the nodes who make decisions in these protocols will actually have consensus safety uh, as long as the number of faults exhibited in their union of their views is less than the smallest of their fault tolerance thresholds. And this is really cool because having fault tolerance thresholds in the protocol um, makes it easier to attack and poses a bunch of economic problems that are kind of out of scope for this talk, but stuff about cartelization and focal points. Um, validator rotation, this is an exciting thing. Uh, so I'm gonna change the structure of the blockchain a little bit to add weights to the, to the block, right? Before we had validator weights kind of be a, this global thing. Now we're gonna add weights to the justification. The, so the you know, blocks are gonna be the same as before, like you know, they have a block, a sender, a justification, and the justification now has this additional thing called the weights. And then we, can, we need to redefine the score of a block to use the weights of the parent's block in order to actually choose that block. So if, if block A has weights, has a, has a certain set of weights, then the children of block A, which are the blocks that have a pre-block weight of block A, need to be chosen according to those weights. And not a single one of the other definitions need to change. And so this is like really like all that we needed to do to do consensus safety, uh, sorry, to do validate rotation with consensus safety, um, basically because all of the definitions satisfy the, the, the correct practice, the, the, the abstract safety proof, um, you know, because like, because they, they, they you know, they have a common future unless there's T faults. Um, and they only decide on safe estimates. So liveness is an interesting thing. Um, you know, liveness means that nodes like are guaranteed to eventually make a decision. There's a result in consensus literature called FLP impossibility. That means that, you know, you can't really be live and safe in an asynchronous network without, and, uh, without using uh, entropy or, oh no, without using entropy or uh, cryptography. Um, but actually we have, we have kind of a bigger issue than just FLP and possibility, which is that we never said anything about when validators were actually meant to send blocks. Um, they actually, we just haven't specified that yet, because all we've really talked about is safety. And so, however, we're gonna see in our ex experimental results in just a second, um, that there are sta sets of messages that they could get to which are safe. Um, and that means that as long as we can make those shapes, then we can have liveness. But, um, and, and we kind of know that uh, in, a, in, in a synchronous network or in a partially synchronous network, nodes can use timeouts to make this kind of message shape, you know, up to some number of faults. Um, um, and, so, and so if we were to pick one of these, then we could, we could, give, a, we could give a liveness proof for some strategy that says, oh look, you guys have to figure out how to make a DAG in this, of messages in this, in this form. Um, but, you know, we're not really gonna do that. Um, we're just gonna leave liveness out of the story for now. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is kind of the, maybe the more exciting part of the talk. So this is, we're gonna look at actually, and try to see what this looks like. So, 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 so these are three validators running the binary consensus, um, and they, the color here means that they've reached safety with some, num some amount of fault tolerance. Um, and kind of, they, they're, they're, the, the, the numbers in here, you see the, there's ones, and that one's a zero, it's maybe a little bit hard to see. Um, the numbers are their estimates, and they need to have the estimate be the max weight of the latest messages they've seen in the justifications. These arrows, these, 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 these lines, are the point to the messages that are included in the justification. Remember, the, the data structure is estimate, which is a bit, Sender, which is like you know validator one, validator two, or validator three, and the justification, which is encoded with this with this structure, showing you know a few more nodes uh, coming to consensus on a bit here. Um, so the darker color means that they have more more fault tolerance. Uh, this is kind of cool because it illustrates the the, the flexibility that we have about the order of message passing, uh, because we haven't said really anything at all actually about that. Um, now the blockchain consensus protocol is a little bit more complicated to think about because it's got these things called pre-block pointers, right? So there's dotted lines, these thin ones are justification pointers, these are pre-block pointers, the blue ones are the latest fork choice by the validators, and the red one is our fork choice. So basically like, you know, the, the way the fork choice works is okay, you know, you, so validator one has the most weight, 
So from the Genesis block, we go to validator one. And here, there's only, so it, only has, it only has one parent. And here, we could, we could have went that way or this way, but actually, the latest messages are here, there, and there, and all of them have their weight here. And so the weight is all on this fork and not on that one, and so we go left. And then here, you know, there, there, there's a pre-block pointer here, and also another one there, and if you look at the latest messages, there's more of them here. Uh, and, so, and so that's why we kind of go there. Um, and, he, and, 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 and what this kind of shows you here is that validator three uh, has, m has more weight than validator one. Right, so the re reason why we initially chose this actually wasn't because validator zero had more weight, it's because all of their latest messages are on this one. So, here we go. So, th so, th so this is kind of the, the blockchain consensus kind of an action for three nodes. Um, they're they're going to like use the greedy heaviest observed fork choice rule where every every choice in the road, they're, they're, like first we went that way and now we went that way because more validators made blocks there. Here we are, then we fork, right? There's, there's forking on the top and then here we achieve safety, right? This kind of, sa this, when these things get colored, they have asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance safety. Um, and notice that we're, they fork at the top and they have safety at the bottom and the way we calculate safety here, you know, is using the safety oracle that I described earlier where you look at these cliques which see each other agree and can't see each other disagree. Now we can watch more nodes kind of go faster. And here's, you see, you see some interesting stuff where like a bunch, of val a bunch of blocks will get finalized at the same time sometimes, right? Because every, this is the thing to kind of realize, like blocks can contribute to the finality of many, many blocks. Um, and and ba basically because every block you have will like agree and disagree with other blocks, large number of them, and which blocks you disagree with and agree with actually will determine how the safety oracle turns up. Uh, and so remember the colors not forking up here at the top, lots of forking. Like look at the red line; it's, it kind of goes and changes, right? Like you don't really know if these blocks are confirmed or if they're going to be consensus, but the ones down here are, right? So it's so it's very much like a forky thing. It's a kind of a blockchain-like thing. But this is really this is really what I'm talking about. This is kind of what I was saying when I say that I can achieve asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerant consensus with the overhead of Nakamoto consensus. If you, if they do manage to send the messages around a round robin, then eventually you get to a point where every additional message finalizes an additional block. And this kind of overhead for finality of consensus at every block, like one message per block for finality at any level of fault tolerance threshold, is like theoretically optimal because you, know, you can't really get lower than one message per block. Um, and this is kind of a little interesting here. You see that this validator has more weight than these two. This is why the fork choice rule, this validator, well, even though you saw that block, would have preferred to build on his like initial block than these ones because these two guys have less weight than this one. Um, and so, so this is kind of what I mean when I say that like, you know, we can achieve really, really efficient asynchronous consensus safety. So somehow, you know, I know it's like a bit much, but I shared a consensus safety proof that talks about, um, you know, these local determinations of estimate safety and how they're related to consensus safety. And we were able to define a blockchain consensus protocol through, like basically by first defining the binary consensus protocol that satisfies the safety proof and making a really like minor change that doesn't affect the safety proof at all. Um, and then we were able to actually add validator rotation and remove fi uh, finality thresholds also with very minimal changes to the protocol. And the reason why we can do this and why it's like so little work is because of the fact that the proofs that we're relying on are not changing while we're making these changes, right? There's the, we have like abstract safety proofs, concrete protocols, which we can tweak without changing the safety proof. Um, and, you know, we were able to achieve this really nice kind of latency numbers. Uh, so, the, you know, I think that, uh, you know, this is hopefully going to be educational. Uh, hopefully going to lead to new consensus protocols. You know, we actually have a bunch of consensus protocols that weren't mentioned here that were derived according to this process, replicating things like uh, concurrent um, block structures instead of sequential ones or like an, an integer um, could be useful for me for time stamping. So here's a little secret. And just now, I published the prototype for, the, uh, for, these, for, this, for binary consensus and the blockchain consensus. Um, and also, this, uh, a white, like a specification 
in very much detail of all of this stuff and a um, more incomplete description of the correct by construction process given at a very, very high level of abstraction, much higher than I even hinted at today. Um, so, you know, this kind of represents the state of the work today. Um, and, you know, I gear, I, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to check it out and to take a look at the correct by construction consensus protocols and see if, you know, you find them as easy to reason about as I do. Some acknowledgments and then we're done, right? Uh, so, so Nate and Danny uh, worked really hard to help me uh, get ready for DevCon and get the code published, get the papers ready. Um, you know, million thanks to them. Carl, who just spoke uh, last, uh, was the first person to really, actually the first developer on uh, the correct by construction Casper. Greg Meredith, who is here somewhere but I haven't seen him yet, uh, has uh, you know, really introduced me to the correct by construction process and helped me really like formalize and like like kind of take this mathematical approach. Finally, Vitalik, you know, has been working with me on this stuff for years, like three years more. Um, you know, so thanks for th thanks a lot for everyone, and thank you for listening. <laughs>